Hello and welcome to another episode of the Life After Cardiac Arrest podcast with me, your host, Paul Swindell. Do you think you are alone? According to the Resus Council document, Resuscitation to Recovery, published in March 2017, in England, our ambulance services attempted to resuscitate about 30,000 people suffering from an out-of-hospital cardiac arrest. That's And also roughly the same number did not get uh, resus attempted. That's because the, they turned up too late um, or they had a DNR on them. No, this is just in England and does not include cardiac arrest taking place in hospital. So we sort of round up those figures for the UK. We're talking about roughly 100,000 people a year experiencing an SCA, sudden cardiac arrest. And approximately 8% of those are discharged home alive. So if you're a survivor and you're in the UK, you are one of the 8%. You are not alone. But have you ever met another survivor? Personally, up until, well, up until I instigated getting to see another survivor and getting to talk to one, I hadn't met one. I mean, I lived in, uh, or I do live in Essex, which is about 15 minutes away from the Essex Cardiothoracic Centre, which is where I was treated after my event. And that is uh, quite a major centre now, in uh, based in Essex, and they cover the Essex and surrounding areas. And the population is oh, well over a million and a half, I think it is, or around a million and a half. So it's quite a lot of people, and they treat... Um, I believe around 130, 40, 150 maybe uh, cardiac arrest cases a year. So they have quite a lot of uh, people passing through there. But because of the circumstances at the time um, and the setup, I didn't really get introduced to, into uh, any other survivors and I didn't know of any survivors in my local area. And tell truth at that time, I didn't really know what a cardiac arrest or a sudden cardiac arrest was. Um, So the only way I could sort of uh, get to meet people or find out more about what I should be feeling and um, trying to understand what I'd gone through was online. And if you've listened to my journey podcast, you're... um, you'll hear about how I got to meet other people and what happened to me. But I just sort of give you a little uh, a recap of that is that I went on to Dr. Google and scared myself. And then I found uh, an online forum where I met some other people. You know, this is this forum had all sorts of uh, um, uh, this website had all sorts of uh, areas for different conditions. And one of them was sudden cardiac arrest. That's where I got to know about the term sudden cardiac arrest because up to then it wasn't really utilised in the UK. But from there I joined a sudden cardiac arrest group as I said and uh, met a whole bunch of, uh, or a few um, people from the UK and from that got to organise a a meet-up in London. Uh, Just prior to that actual meet-up, someone who happened to used to live in my area and was coming back this way um we got together and and had a uh, a drink in the pub even though he coming back he was actually quite worried about driving the the distance and I remember that thinking you know at that point I think I'd only just got my driving license back and I was only used to driving very short distances and I could totally understand but he, he had a a real reason to to come back to the home area so um he had to do it but we met in a pub uh, and that was the first time that i'd met um another cardiac arrest survivor face to face and it, it was good to chat with him about a month later as i say we actually had the the first proper meet up of what essentially has become sudden cardiac arrest uk at that time didn't know that it was going to become anything like it's become but i thought yeah, I really enjoyed meeting Richard and uh, I thought that I could get more out of meeting others who have been through a similar sort of thing and and for my wife Tracy as well. I thought it might be good for her to meet um, some others who have been in a, a lifesaver situation whether they're a partner or not. 
And so we organised this meeting uh, for the end of February, I think it was, 2015, in the Mulberry Bush pub in South Bank in London. And I remember getting the train there and it was a dreary, cold and wet February day, really horrible. And I felt quite nervous and there was a certain amount of trepidation about going to this thing, you know, thinking who would turn up, you know, we don't know each other, we're essentially all strangers from all over the parts of the country. I mean, for me, it was about an hour and a half, maybe a little bit more to get there. But for others, they had, they were, as I say, coming from all over the country. So it could be quite a long journey and could be potentially a waste of a journey if they, do, if people don't click or, you know, people just aren't similar or don't have such shared experiences. But as it turns out, we, um, I was delighted to find that we had 13 people turn up and we were a good bunch of uh, survivors and family members and partners and lifesavers. So there was, there was someone for everyone to talk to. There was lots of overlaps. I mean, everyone had their own unique story, but everyone had something um, common that they could share with each other. And, and it, was, it was really good to talk face to face with people, talk with others who who understood what you were you were saying and how you were feeling and, and to get it, you know. Uh, and that, as I say, is not just from my point of view as a survivor. It was good for the for the um, lifesavers and partners to be able to sort of break away and talk out of earshot of the survivors because that their experience and their trauma was totally different from what the patient had experienced. And quite often they are... They are almost like a forgotten patient. So I know from after that, that that meetup was really uh, helpful for my wife and helpful for other lifesavers and partners because they weren't going mad when they felt like they were having to check on their partner or me, my wife having to check on me every five minutes and being totally over the top when I didn't answer my phone straight away and things like that. Anyway, um, since then, there have been a bunch of more uh, meetups in in London again at the Mulberry Bush Bush at the Mulberry Bush Pub, and each time they've got slightly bigger with more people attending, and seeing the same faces come back again is really good because that helps people um, see how people progress as they um, go through their recovery. And I really think I see a lot of uh, similar cases where people there's a, when you're thrown into um, this situation, there's a lot of uncertainties and a lot of unknowns. But speaking to people um, as time goes by, time I, I used to say a lot time is a healer and it really is in cardiac arrest scenario. Um, but helping to speak with people can really ease the fears and anxieties that you might have. Um, so it's great if we can get more and more people or you can get people to come along to meetups that are experienced and going through the recovery process. As I say, we've had more meetups in London, but we've also had meetups in uh, regional areas like Birmingham, Bath and Edinburgh. And there's been a few um, smaller get togethers as well. Um, it doesn't really matter the size of, of a meetup. It can be just a couple of people meeting in a coffee shop. Ones that we've held in London and some of these other areas have been slightly bigger. We're trying to encourage more people. The more people that come, it is better. But sometimes, you know, if you're really anxious about some of these things, maybe going to a smaller one first would be the better route for you. But all in all, it is good to talk. I mean, I know BT coined that phrase for their advertising a few years ago, but it, it is. When people talk, when when you talk about your experience, it, I mean, essentially when you go to counselling and some of these other therapies, that's what you're doing. You're talking about it and it, it helps you to, pro, your brain to process it and unload it and you do feel better. And it, I think it makes it even feel more worthwhile when you're talking with someone who really understands what you're talking about has got a real um can really empathize with you anyway if you, if you feel like um organizing a meetup in your area um as i say it doesn't have to be a big one just can be a um a little meetup in the cafe or whether have a look on sudden cardiac arrest uk.org 
slash organising dash a dash meet dash up. You can get to that from the home page under the uh, about uh, menu. And one thing that I would always say is that meetups always receive positive feedback. So it, it's really a worthwhile thing to do. And talking of feedback, I'll just give you a couple of examples of the stuff that we've received. I wouldn't be here where I am at now without it. I'm sure of it. For me, it was a real pleasure to meet others I had not met before, but had communicated through Facebook to hear their stories and what they thought. No one, no matter how close or well-meaning, they can never really fully understand what we all go through emotionally on a daily basis and it was very comforting to be with people who share this. The most inspiring thing of the day was seeing how positive everyone is. I for one have gained a lot from today and hopefully others have too. We all had a great time on Saturday and felt most welcome. It was an absolute privilege to meet each and every one of you. I really enjoyed it. It was great to meet everyone and hear their stories. So you can see, it's uh, you know you're in a win-win situation, really. And I should probably just point out um, that it's not just the immediate effect of talking with people; it can have a longer-term effect on you. And this is uh, I'm just going to read a little bit of um, a post that Bob, um, who's in the group, Bob Reville. And he did a, a lovely post because uh, I think it really changed the path of his recovery. Well, it's a month since the meetup. I posted at the time saying how much I enjoyed it, how inspired I'd been and how much I got out of the day. One month on, I feel a follow up post is required because I'm still feeling the benefits from that day. Since my SCA, I've always tried to be positive about things, get the most out of life and carry on as normal. However, no one can really appreciate the emotional aspect of being an SCA survivor until you are one. So leading a normal life afterwards can sometimes be difficult. I work full time, have my own business as well and also have my 87 year old dad to take care of Plus, I do like to make the most of my free time. So generally, I do lead a full and active life. But my biggest obstacle seems to be have been the anxiety and panic attacks. Something which I'm sure most of us are familiar with. Especially the vicious circle of palpitations or fast heartbeat causing anxiousness, which in turn makes them worse. Whilst I tried my hardest not to let this affect my life, it was not always possible. However, since spending the afternoon of June the 24th in a room full of people in the same situation as me, I have not had a single attack. I have certainly felt a lot better about things since that day. A few people have even commented that I seem more like my old self than I have done for a long time. So it seems I'm now seeing longer term benefits from the meetup as well as short term ones. So I think Bob sort of summed it up really well that it really can help in all sorts of ways. From that um, meetup that Bob was talking about, that was one of the London ones. And he actually travelled all the way down from Sheffield where he lives. So he, he took a, a big step to actually get there the panic and the anxiety and about traveling and all that sort of stuff. And he stayed in a place that were in London. Um, so it, it, take my hat off the Bob and, uh, he got the just rewards out of that. But anyway, at, at that meeting, um, I had a jokey conversation with another survivor who was there for the first time. It was Ben Parkin. And, uh, we were talking, well, I can't remember exactly what we were talking about, but it must have been about how many people there were there and uh, the subject about whether a world record existed for the largest number of uh, cardiac arrest survivors together. I probably didn't really think much of it at the time or, or afterwards, but about a couple of months later, Ben did a post uh, to a couple of us about um, how he had followed it up with the Guinness World Records um, 
And apparently there was no existing record. So from that point, we decided, yeah, that's a great idea. Why don't we create one? So the idea for the next meetup was born. And we set a date of uh, June 9th, 2018. And uh, the Guinness World Records um, had set lots of rules and criteria that we had to follow, uh, making it actually quite a big task. And we assembled uh, a hun- number of people to to help us with this, um, especially from the Essex Cardiothoracic Centre as one of the criteria is that there had to be a to medical facility. Anyway, we had a, an absolutely uh, fantastic day and we achieved the record, if, if you've seen it on our website and other places, and we achieved the record with an amazing 127 survivors turning up. And as well as that record, which was amazing and mind-blowing for many people, um, as well as the record, we had a full day of other activities and educational sessions, including learning CPR and uh, mindfulness and coping with the trauma of the event, a um, whole host of things. And from that, we got so much great feedback. I mean, I'll just read you a few of these as well. So many people with similar tales to tell who had overcome cardiac arrest with significant help from the NHS and friends and family, and seeing similarities between your own experience and theirs. Wonderful people with whom I have made friends and something I will treasure forever. Meeting other survivors and their families, it was like therapy as everyone just gets it. The most emotional and happy thing that I have been subject to in years. The whole event was one big party. The evening event was so relaxed with people just getting to know each other, think we feel all like we have made friends for life. It was an amazing day. Great organisers and the volunteers were very helpful throughout the day. Best experience since my SCA by far. Simply one of the best weekends of my life. Well, that is saying something. So you can appreciate that a lot of people got a lot out from that um, that day. But, you know, the Guinness World Record is probably a one-off and may never be repeated. Unless someone breaks our record, that is, or we want to push our record a little bit further. But it was a huge amount of work and uh, I take my hat off to everyone else who who contributed to to the event because they put a lot of work in for that. So thanks a lot for them. But anyway, we hopefully we've learnt um, from last year and planned something just as good. The Not Alone event, which will take place on Saturday the 28th of September 2019. Comment from last year's event was that the, a lot of people were reluctant to travel down to the south to Essex. So taking that on board, we looked for a venue that was um, a little more central for people. And thanks to Ingrid and Gareth, we have a fabulous venue in the Barnsdale Hall Hotel, which is pretty much in the centre of England. And it's within 90 minutes drive of many um, major towns and cities like Birmingham, London, Liverpool, uh, Manchester, Leeds. Um, So... Hopefully we can get people coming from all over. And I really think um, that, you know, some people may be reluctant to, to travel far, but we we really think we've got a, a gr- such a great lineup that it's more than worth the effort of traveling or having to push yourself out of that comfort zone. As I mentioned earlier in, uh, in this podcast, uh, the very first time I met another cardiac arrest survivor was when he was pushing himself out of his comfort zone basically to drive from where he was now living all the way back here and that he, I remember him saying it was the furthest he had ever driven since his arrest and he was really quite nervous about it but you know doing those sort of things uh, help you in your recovery and you get hopefully you will get the benefits out of it anyway going back to the not alone event it's at the Barnsdale Hall Hotel, which is a countryside complex uh, on the edge of the Rutland Water, which is actually a stunning location. 
with lots of green spaces and um, beautiful old buildings and uh, nice gardens and it's got facilities such as tennis courts, crazy golf and spa facilities. So it's, uh, if you want to make a whole weekend of it, you can um, you can do so. Um, we have the Edith Western Suite, which is a separate complex. And that has several rooms and, and bars that we can configure for our own needs. So the plan is to have one or two rooms uh, available for the talks and the interactive sessions um, and other areas available for um, an exhibition and another one for people just to mingle and chill and chat together because we know that a lot of people just want to do that they just want to talk with other survivors other lifesavers and so um, it's good having a combination of the the talks which are not mandatory you don't have to go to those but and there's plenty of areas and hopefully it will be a nice day there's a lovely outside area as well so we've got a great lineup of speakers presentations and interactive sessions and uh, i'll talk about those in a little minute um, if you're wondering about food, we'll have some um, registration is from 9.30, I think. Um, and we'll have some pastries and refreshments throughout the day available. And lunch will be provided. And in the evening, we're going to be having um, the Celebration of Life Party, round two. Um, and we'll have a, a barbecue with a DJ and a live band um, who are supposed to be excellent and uh a balloon and close-up magician um, who is who earlier in the year was up for family entertainer of the year and if you came to last year's event you'll have seen um, Trevor Klein and he is an absolutely superb magician and of course the uh, highlight of the evening will hopefully be Dr Tom's dancing again that was something to behold if you were there last year anyway just talking about some of the sessions that we've got lined up some of this is all subject to change because we're still trying to tweak and uh, plan as as best we can for for the day. But we're going to be having we're going to be having a session on uh, the psychological aspect of survivorship. We have uh, cardiologists uh, available for questioning in terms of just general heart problems or issues, and also um, to do with your devices. We've got our um, one of the cardiologists is an expert on the SICD. So if you've got one of those, I recommend you come along. We've got Sad UK and um, Charlotte Pickwick talking about putting AEDs into your local community. We've got uh, sessions on memory issues and fatigue. And they're the two top sequelae or think problems that people complain about post-cardiac arrest. And we've got two experts, or one of them's a, a world expert, um, Professor Barbara Wilson. Um, got a session on uh, mindfulness to help you get your mojo back. And if you want to get back into doing exercise and sport, um, we've got an exercise uh, session on that. And we're going to have a session for partners as well and lifesavers. And of course, Throughout the day, you'll have an uh, opportunity to learn CPR and know what an AED is. The people coming to, to talk, and they will be available at other times during the day, I imagine. Um, let's say we've got four cardiologists coming. We've got Dr. Thomas Keeble and Dr. John Davis from the Essex Cardiothoracic Centre. Many of you will know Dr. Keeble from uh, the podcast and things within the group and last year's event. We've got Professor William Toff, who is uh, who leads up the HeartWise organisation, and he's a very experienced cardiologist. And Dr Andrew Grace, who I mentioned, is the SICD um, expert. And we've got neuro rehab experts from the Oliver Zangwill Centre. As I mentioned, Dr Professor Barbara Wilson, who is world expert in all of that. And one of her colleagues, Donna Malley, who has uh, one of the co-authors of a, a headway book on fatigue. So she should be excellent um, to listen to and get some tips from if you, you're experiencing that. And I know many survivors do experience um, fatigue. We've got the clinical psychologist from Dr. Marco Meehan, and he works at the Essex Cardiothoracic Centre, amongst other places. And uh, 
he's probably one of the leading people in the in the country who's spoken to cardiac arrest survivors. And from Australia, we've got Professor Karen Smith, who uh, leads up a, a, the cardiac arrest registry in Australia. Um, we've also got cardiac specialist nurse Neil McGee, who um, has spoken to many survivors and uh, partners and helped them through. He's part of the, the care team at the Essex Cardio Thoracic Centre and also was interviewed on the, uh, the podcast earlier in the series. Psychotherapist James Whitfield and Michelle Webster, who's a cardiac physiologist. And of course, we've got Saj UK and Do It For Deep Fib talking about the ADs. We've also got an area set aside for uh, an exhibition where you can talk to some of the people who are supporting the event. Um, we've got Saj UK. We've got a pharmacist in. So if you've got any questions about your medications and you want to just drop in and have a, a chat with them about those. Um, that'd be ideal for that. We've got Heartwise, as mentioned, with uh, Professor William Toff and he, his uh, organisation doing CPR. And that's, just to be clear, that's going to be in a separate building. Um, there is a separate area. So if you don't want to see, pe- see people doing CPR or learn about AEDs, you don't need to. You, it's going to be well away from where we are. Well, I say well away, it's probably 150 metres, something like that at most. So it's, it's quite close, but you don't need to see it if you don't want to. We've got the big companies that uh, produce the uh, ICDs and pacemakers and other cardiac implantable devices, Medtronic, Boston Scientific, Abbott. So if you want to speak to any of those guys there, that'd be a great opportunity. And we've got other people supporting us well medical client cardiac science corporation abo med carneo novum lairdell ninova and probably one you would have heard of zol who's a very common uh, aed maker so thanks to all of those um organizations this sort of event will be put on uh, and can go on so thanks a lot to them and if you're thinking about coming along, the tickets are just £5 for the day, and that includes your lunch. Um, the evening is slightly more expensive at £25, but this includes a barbecue and lo- a top quality barbecue and loads of entertainment. As I said, we've got a, a, a fantastic evening lined up. So if you're thinking about, oh, I'm just going to go to the evening, I'm just going to go to the daytime and I can't be bothered to go the evening, I won't socialise. Do think again because last year quite a few people did that but then they regretted not going because the evening event was really quite special and it's the time to sort of let your hair down maybe you have a couple of drinks and you'll feel a little bit more relaxed and it, yeah it's, it's a great time to 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 chat again um the tickets are available from our website um or from the ticket supplier, which is scauk.yapsody.com. But all of, all of that um, links to them and more of information about the event is on our website, suddencardiacarrestuk.org slash not dash alone dash event. But there's links on the homepage. So if you just go to the suddencardiacarrestuk.org page, you should be able to find it. And there's information about the actual day, the the sessions, the speakers, uh, in accommodation. If you want to stay at the um, the venue, I think the accommodation might be quite limited now. Um, but there are plenty of other uh, alternatives round about in the Oakham area. And um, we really want to, as many people to take advantage of the fantastic lineup we have assembled here. And so if the financial aspect is a concern, then please let us know and we'll see what we can do. OK, we can't promise anything, but if, if it's, uh, you know, the five pound is put off for you, then come along and um, we'll, we'll refund it for you. But we would like uh, don't, some donations, but. We want as many people there as possible is the bottom line of this. So the last thing, why go? You know, you won't find a better opportunity to share your experience with others. And I've mentioned before that sharing can really help you process what you've been through 
uh, and it can be such a great experience you know meeting others who get exactly what you're going through and it's highly unlikely you'll meet as many others who experience what you have anywhere else you know, you, there's going to be loads of medical experts there and you know you'll get a chance to learn from from the talks but you'll also be able to ask them questions and learn about what happened to you and why you're feeling the way you are I mean, after all, you've joined a very unique club, so why not make the most of it? And if you think, you know, maybe you feel like you're cured, if you do, um, I'd ask you to come along anyway, because you've probably got invaluable experience that can be passed on to others to help them. And, you know, I've, I've learned myself that sharing my experience and talking with others helps me in turn. And it, it's a win-win situation. So if you feel like you don't need it for yourself, perhaps think again. Maybe you can come along and, and uh, help others. But also, I'm no doubt you will help yourself. And, you know, coming along, I've no doubt, will change your life for the better. And you will not feel alone.